Hello from SlideNerd and hello from Weebs. What's up folks? In this video, I'm going to talk about how to build relative layouts in Android using Java code. Now remember, the recommended default approach is to build layouts in XML unless you have some very specific requirements like for example, the user clicks somewhere on the map and based on that you want to show something dynamic and that time you can build relative layouts in Java code. Now this is going to be a very hectic procedure. In this video, I'm going to simply give you guys a theoretical overview of this. In the next video, I'm going to jump into Eclipse and show you guys exactly how to make that. So here, let me talk about the different steps you have. What we are going to do in the next video is going to build this user interface which you guys see over here using relative layouts and using Java code only. There will be no XML involved. So first, there are some several steps for that. First, create all the view and view group objects. As you guys can see over here, there is a relative layout which is your view group, this text view, this edit text, this button and again you have text view and blah 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 right. And all these things create objects for each of them. That is the first step. Second step. Define the width and height for each of them again for the relative layout if you guys remember this is going to take the entire screen up So relative layout is match parent in width and match parent in height and these controls Probably take wrap content in width and wrap content in height for those dimensions need to be defined in the second step for each and every view and view group in the third step Define the rule for each now. This is very special case. This applies only for a relative layout So let me talk about what the rules are here you see, this is, says please log in first and then if you guys see, username comes exactly below this, the edit text comes to the right of this and this edit text also comes below this, this other edit text comes below this edit text and all these things you can see the relationships between each views right, as terms of who comes where and that is what rules are all about. All these rules are going to be defined in the third step and then in the fourth step, what we have is we have additional properties. For example, this uh, username text view has a text color white and it has a background color probably black. This edit text probably has a background drawable. It doesn't look like a default edit text which we use. All right. So all these uh, additional properties that you have text size, text color, background color, those are your additional properties which are defined in step four. Ultimately, you have step five where you add these controls inside the relative layout. Now, remember, so far you have defined everything separately here. You simply mix all of them together by adding the views to the relative layout. Ultimately, in step six, you use the set content view method. To that method, you pass the relative layout object to tell the Android system that this activity will have an appearance defined by this relative layout object all right so in the next video we are going to actually follow these six steps and build a user interface which looks exactly like this using relative layouts and using only java code so let me give a little more detail of each step so that you guys can understand stuff better in the next video when we talk about them first create all view and view group objects very simple over here you guys can see whatever stuff is there on the screen create objects for each of them right you have relative layout you have the text view you have the edit text you have the button for each of them you simply have to create objects by using their constructors right that's the basic step now if you guys notice something all the constructors take something called this as a parameter now what is this well simply you're required to pass an object of context inside now context is nothing but a simple class that actually allows you to access the system level services in android and resources in android all right now every view and view group takes this context object as parameter now remember one thing your activity extends uh, the activity class if you remember right and the activity class itself extends this context class and that is the reason why you pass this over here that is a reference to your uh, class which you created it simply and automatically converts it to their con context over there all right this is nothing but a property in java called super class reference variable can refer to a subclass object now remember if you guys don't know this property i'll be talking about this in my java videos you guys can check it out over there all right this is very simple next let me go to the other step width and height for each now if you guys see the xml over here it's pretty simple you have layout width is match parent layout height is match parent and again for the text view you have some layout width and some layout height right it's compulsory to give layout width and height for each of the controls whether they are views or view groups how do you do that in java code well in java code you simply use a class called layout params now this layout params is inside your relative layout class all right and to create an object of that, you simply say relative layout dot layout params. Now, the reason why you write it like this is because your layout params is an inner class inside your relative layout. All right. So that being said, let me actually go ahead and say layout params. It takes two parameters, which is your width, right? Width is match parent. This match parent is represented by this integer, which is a static integer inside your layout params class. All right. So here you see layout params dot match parent, layout params dot match parent. And this is nothing but you have defined the width and height. Now, remember. You need to add this width and height 
to this relative layout right like it's it, it is an XML so for that you use an additional step by saying relative layout dot set layout params and dimension now this R is an object of your relative layout this dimensions is nothing but this params object which you created above right and you basically do the same step for all the views for example for this text view you probably have something like T dot set layout params and dimensions if you define some other dimensions for the text view right let me go to the next step define the rule for each now if you guys remember over here it says align parent left is true align parent right is true below is something right now what do you what does this mean now when you say layout below you're simply saying that this edit text should appear below this guy and who is this guy it is probably some other text view with an id equals to email text view right how do you write this in java very simple you simply use the layout params class which you used in the last step to not only define dimensions but also define these rules for example you want to have this edit text you want to define rules for that you can simply make this layout params object by saying blah 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 is new layout params define the width and height in the first step in the second step use the same layout params object and say dot add rule here you simply add the rule by saying relative relative layout dot align parent left and that will make this uh, rule i mean added to the edit text this will make the edit text aligned to the parents left side right now how do you make a rule like this by saying layout below here you need an id how do you write a rule like this in java code very simple again use the same method add rule but here you pass two parameters the first parameter is this which says layout below second parameter is nothing but the id now the id is actually in java represented by an integer over here you simply pass an integer number over here and that number is going to find the control with the id and set your edit text below that right now remember if things look a bit blurry to you at this step i'm going to talk about this in detail in the next video when we actually work in eclipse all right so for now you guys can hold on a bit i can i'm sure about that all right next is to define additional properties it's very simple which you guys have seen already background color foreground color text size all those stuff then again you have very simple step you have to add the view to the relative layout so for that you simply say relative layout r dot add view so for example t which is your text view over here r is your relative layout over here this t params is the layout params for the text view and that is the other parameter where you define the rules and width and everything for the text view and you add that over here right this is how you add stuff again i'll show you in eclipse how this works in detail so don't worry much about it if you guys don't understand everything so here ultimately in the last step you simply use the set content view method and you pass the relative layout object r inside this and that is going to set the appearance all right so in the next video i'm going to jump into eclipse and make this user interface in java code so if you like what you saw please subscribe to my channel comment let me know your thoughts i would love to hear from you guys thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next bit have a nice day